All right, we resume. Sorry about that. Having technical difficulties here and on the road, but uh, no, stop that. You're gonna, you're gonna ruin my live stream. But uh, yeah, we are live and heading to Homer. What's funny is Chuck from Alaska Ballistics is ahead of us on the road. Oh, this is dangerous. I gotta set this up and not do this. Don't don't. Do watch Chuk almost die on the road every time, guaranteed. So we are driving uh, from Anchorage, Alaska to Homer, Alaska to take a boat somewhere, our secret bear hunting location, and go bear hunting. And yes, I am going to be hunting with a Kimber Micro 380. Just kidding. I, I'm not going to, but I did bring it because I just got that. I got a Kimber Micro 380. I want to test it out, uh, having fun with that. But uh, it is, I don't know, what's up with this stupid mouth? Um, it's pretty cool, but yeah, we'll have the 270 on me. I almost brought the 338, but um, it's it's got that duplex reticle on it, an older duplex, and I hadn't uh, used it a lot, so decided not to bring the 338. Um, the 270 is just shooting slightly to the right. You need an 800-pound bear with a hatchet. That's right. That's right. What a mess is here. So, uh, beautiful weather. It was sunny earlier, now clouded up. Uh, I don't think it was gonna rain. It's gonna rain, but you just wait five minutes; it'll change. The weather report had said um, that there was going to be rain, and then it changed to sunny. Um, I think it's mostly going to be decent weather here in South Central Alaska, so we shall see. Um, let's see if I can fix this. Super annoying. Always something, Chuk. Always something. So, I'm going to set that right there. Or right there. Ah, it's better. So, uh, we're on the road. Um, uh, I have scheduled a video for tomorrow morning uh, about my buddy Mike's bear hunt. So, I'm excited about that. He just, him and his buddy, both got black bears. Uh, so, that's coming up in the morning. And he sent me some footage of that. So, uh I got the uh, the death moan, so there is a warning on there, but that's something interesting. If you've never killed a bear before, they do this eerie death moan. It's kind of a horrible sound that you'll never uh, forget, but that was actually uh, caught on, on camera after he shot the black bear. So I'm feeling pretty good about the trip. We've only got two days to hunt, really. Uh, but this is a pretty good spot. It's the exact spot I got my bear last year. And uh, I feel like it's a funnel for the bears to come down the mountains in the spring uh, to this field on the beach, and they eat that soft beach grass. They love it. it uh, when their stomachs are empty when they come out of their dens. They, they need that grass to clear out their stomachs. So... That's what we're doing. Uh, Chuck will be doing most of the hunting, um, but I'm feeling pretty good because last year I killed myself, like I said, hiking and riding that stupid fat tire bike for miles and miles. And uh, and then I was just through with hunting and then something walked up on that that field uh, 300 yards from uh, the tent. So that's pretty exciting. And I'm pretty sure uh, we'll at least see bears. I know which trails to uh, send Chuck on to get a bear. Oh, we're coming up on the inlet. This is going to be pretty. There's Chuck. Don't look at his license plate number. But we are coming up on the inlet. Uh, this is Turnigan Arm. And it's, uh, it's pretty because... Uh, it's just nestled in between these these two mountain ranges, and I'll show you some more in a little while, but it's got the boar tide that comes in, and then sometimes beluga whales come in in the summer. People are going to start 
detonating for hooligans right out here. Maybe we'll see that. Um, and that's pretty interesting. There's these little minnow fish. They're teeny little six-inch fish that you fry up. People like to pickle them Norwegian style. I don't care for that. I can't stomach the pickled fish. But, um, yeah, that's just around this bend. Uh, probably another 30 minutes up. I Hopefully I won't cut out again. There's a couple pockets on this mountain road where you lose signal. But otherwise, it's good for an hour and 15 minutes. So, yeah, we are heading out and uh, I'm pretty excited. I think we will at least see a bear. I don't know if we'll get one. That's, that's kind of tough without a boat. And when you uh, are without a boat and when you only got a couple nights, uh, it's tough. And that's how I always do it. Mike got his, his because he's, he had a boat. And uh, that makes it much easier. So no boat. Oh, now this is the, uh, you can see it right there. It's the bird sanctuary. Um, and it drives me nuts because in the summer and fall, it's just filled with ducks and, and swans and geese. Uh, but then when I go to my duck hunting spot another hour here, they just, you can, you can come right close to them and take pictures here. But then when they're out in the wild, spot and then they just take off and you get they sense you at all uh, so it drives me nuts but it's a pretty cool place oh uh, there's some ducks oh uh, there's some ducks taking off right there look at that oh mallard hens um ah oh, chook it's always always something sorry about that guys um now there's a guy taking pictures of a look like a seagull why would you take a picture of a seagull Anyway, it's probably a tourist. Um, but summer has finally hit. We had some real crummy, uh, cold spring weather. And now uh, it's still early spring, but it's pretty much summer because we're almost into June. So Alaska summer. Oh, God. Chuck is texting and driving. Chuck is typing in messages. Oh, well, maybe he's doing the voice thing. Somebody tell him to stop. Um yeah, this is going to be a dangerous drive. Oh, there's another duck. They're just driving me nuts. Just want to get some ducks this September. But uh, I called my buddy. I'm bringing a bunch of stuff down for him in Homer, and he said that the highway was crazy. He drove from Homer to Soldatna, and he said it was just full of traffic, and state troopers were everywhere, and it was just pretty crazy. So this is a dangerous drive. Uh, there's always people that die every summer, and now we got Chuck typing in messages to my live stream, and there he is. That's Chuck. Oh, somebody blew out their tire right there. That's Chuck right in ahead of me. We're caravanning down to Homer, Alaska. He's, I just don't get it. It should be watch Chuck die every hunt, guaranteed, because that's unsafe. I don't care who you are. But I'm pretty excited, so we've got one one evening in Homer. I got some work to do, but we're going to stay with my uncle. My dad's going to take us out to eat. And then we are going down to the docks on the Homer spit uh, early in the morning to jump on my friend. Uh, he's, his name is Chuck, too. It goes by Charles. Um, his boat. Well, I guess Chuck's name is Charles. I don't know what I'm talking about. Anymore. But anyways, he's got a new boat. Um, I, I told you guys about his boat that burned down. Uh, hopefully he got insurance settlement because he just finished his new boat a couple days ago. I hope it's a veggie oil boat because it, he he uh, puts he modifies diesel engines to run off vegetable oil diesel and he's done it to cars and that's what his last boat was. So why don't you guys play Magic the Gathering or something? Um, so. Yeah, he's got his new boat, so I am can't wait to check that out because that's primarily uh, what I use to travel to my hunt is my buddy's boat. He's always super kind, available to me. Um, he, they now, I think his family member owns a new breakfast spot on the spit, so we might check that out. It's got crepes and breakfast burritos and stuff, so see how early we can get up and just get out there. Uh, I'm happy that I know the spot. Um, 
and so I can point Chuck in the right direction. I mean, the kids are just going to be whittling sticks. I, I better be careful, though. I uh, So I got a poncho liner for my GI poncho, and you can't uh, use it as a poncho when you tie it on if you don't cut and... And reconnecting. Sorry about that, guys. That was one of the little spots here where you lose signal. Normally, it's a pretty good signal. But, uh, yeah, I cut the finger. Uh, I want to tell you guys about the other Wooby I'm going to get. Hopefully, in a couple weeks, I'm going to order a um, Kafaru Wooby. And that replaces your standard GI Wooby on the GI Poncho and it's just amazing. It's uh, space age technology. It doesn't have cold spots because the insulation is floating around. It's one piece of insulation, very lightweight, much lighter than the GI Wooby, and much, much warmer. Um, and it was pretty cool. If you guys haven't checked out 907 Surplus, check it out. Um, that's where I got the uh, GI liner. And uh, I was talking to the guy, I sold him some stuff. He was super nice to me. And, uh, I told him, well, yeah, I just want this, but I'm going to get one of the Kafaru Woobies. And he said, oh, hell yeah, and start cracking up. And he he knows. So he is a veteran guy. He knows that those Woobies are the ultimate Woobies. So really excited about the Kafaru Woobie, but I'm going to try this out. Chuck went and got a GI poncho from that place, but he didn't get the liner because he doesn't have time to. I had to sew it up. I cut the slit, and then I sewed the edges up so the stuffing wouldn't come out. But uh, I'm excited to, to try that uh, just around camp. I'll put it on the kids. I almost want it to rain. The bears come out in the rain. One guy told me he's only, the only time he's ever shot bears when it was raining pretty hard. So I've seen bears in the rain, but I've also seen bears when it wasn't raining. So, oh, and Chuck is going to live stream early in the morning tomorrow from boat. So that'll be interesting. He's always trying to do something. Spectacular. Uh, speaking of spectacular, there we go. There's the mountains. And that's what we just get to uh, just get to see every day. That's pretty nice. Look at these cliffs behind me. There's a uh, a water stream. Uh, it's a spring, natural spring. But this pipe just comes out of the cliff. It's up here in a couple miles where I like to get my uh, water from. Um, but yeah, just a nice area. It's you know I complain about the crime in Anchorage, but you're able to drive north or south as we are doing now. So it is it is nice. Um, what else can I talk about? Oh, the patches. I'm, I'm sorry. There's still a few I have to send out, and uh, I just uh, am stalling a little on that just because of buying that that. Uh, 270 uh, threw me off my budget balance, so uh, it's just going to be a couple more weeks, and I will get all the patches sent out, even to Poland. Got to figure out how to send a patch to Poland, but I'll do it. I'll do it. So, yeah, we are on the Seward Highway driving south. So far, so good. There's no construction. There might be some slowdowns and some construction. of it. Every summer it happens. Um, no accidents, and I'm being super safe by live streaming while I'm driving. Well, not that safe, but at least I'm not uh, texting messages to somebody's live stream like Chuck is. Uh, what else can I troll him? Well, he, he can't troll me anymore because now I carry the Micro 380 uh, cocked and locked. Uh, before, I was hesitant to do that because I had one of those full-size GI ones, and it just had the big hammer. It just made me nervous how it stuck out. It's just a mental thing, but this one's got the teeny little 
nubbin skeleton eyes handle uh hammer and uh you know i just put the safety on and cock and lock it so it's all right so he can't troll me for that anymore thankfully but he'll find something else uh i did get some better sleep last night so uh i won't be doing much of the honey oh one more mile we're coming up on the uh the water spring i'll show you the guys that the they tested it. It's the best water in Alaska. It's got some minerals in it, and uh, it just tastes so good. I can't even drink tap water anymore after drinking this stuff. So we're at mile 108 now, and mile 109 is where uh, the water is, unless we passed it already. Which I don't think we did because I think it goes up. Oh, we passed it, yeah. Now we're at mile 107. While I was yapping, we passed the water. So I didn't get the snow trekker tent that I wanted. I did get, uh, I just brought along a pretty large Cabela's family tent. And I got a cot. And that's what's nice about boat hunting is you don't have to care about lightweight stuff. All my stuff is heavy. Heavy tent, heavy cot. Everything's heavy. You just drag it off the boat, drag it up the beach, find a spot to set up camp, and that's it. You don't have to haul anything. You're just hauling it, you know, 100 yards to your campsite, and that's it. So, and those boats are safe the more the more weight you put in them, depending on what the weather's like. So, we're just going to pile all our stuff on Charles' boat and head out. So, pretty excited about that old waterfall. See if you guys can see that. Yep. Briefly a waterfall. Uh, can't tell if the tide is in or out at this point. Later, back that way, I can. Got some clouds out there. But, um, yeah, I've got lots of warm clothes because it's technically people consider this summer, but it's still kind of last to spring, and it still gets cold uh, at night in the mornings for sure. So we got a lot of warm gear. And oh, look at these cliffs. That's pretty cool. There's uh, mountain goats that hang out on these cliffs, too. People take pictures of them. It's pretty cool. And I just saw one. Wow. The mountain goat, right? That was synchronicity for you right there. Right when I said mountain goat, I looked up, and there's a mountain goat sitting up on the cliff. Let's take a poll if Chook should pull over and shoot the mountain goat. No, just kidding. I wouldn't do that. I do not want to go to prison. There were some idiots that did that years ago they because these mountain goats are just like 50 feet up sometimes and they pulled over and like uh slaughtered a mountain goat for fun sorry about that they weren't even hunters so they uh slaughtered a mountain goat for hunt fun and uh boy they went they went to prison so yeah chuk doesn't want to do that so yeah we are just cruising along um hopefully i'll film a good hunt for you guys that at least show you some of the uh, the areas we hunt at at least, and you know we can scout it out. It might just be a scouting trip. We'll see. If we're very lucky, we'll get a bear. But I think we'll see a bear for sure. So, what else can I talk about? The uh, 380. I talked about that. I need to get some more extreme penetrators for that. All these people are taking pictures of the waterfalls we keep passing there. There's another waterfall. But uh, I have it in the bug bite holster. I would pull it out and show it to you guys, but that would be unsafe. Uh, as you know, Chuck's all about safety. Safety first, that's what I always say. Uh, I mean, not Chuck, because he texts uh, someone's live stream when they're driving right behind him. But uh, I hope the weather and the... Oh, uh, the tide's out. Tide's out, definitely. There's a bunch of mud here. People die crossing this inlet. Uh, no, you can't see it now. Hopefully, we'll be able to see it over here. Uh, this inlet is very, very dangerous because it's Alaska quicksand. There you go. See all that? The tide is out, and when the tide goes out, you've got that glacial mud, and it turns in quicksand. And I've, I've had some videos of me getting stuck in it, duck hunting. It's horrible. But uh, people cross that because when the tide's out, you can cross over to the other side of the inlet where it's just like untouched land and you shoot ducks or do do whatever, explore. But you've only got like 
an hour and 10 minutes before the water comes back up. So uh, a lot of people, somebody was just rescued last week, I think. Um, there's always people rescued by the Coast Guard because they go out there and then they get stuck and then the tide starts coming up and they're way steep in water and they luckily call the Coast Guard and somebody picks them up. But urban myth, urban legend, it's actually true. A lady was ripped in half by a helicopter because she walked out there, tried to walk across the inlet, got stuck in the mud, sunk to waist deep. And people try to say it's not true, but it's totally true. It's in the newspapers and stuff. And uh, I guess the guys didn't know what they're doing, and they didn't know what kind of suction hold that mud had on her. Hooked her up in a harness, and uh, I hear a, uh, oh, somebody's calling me. Uh, I mean, I thought I heard a train. Anyways, ripped her in half. The helicopter put a harness on her. They tried to pull her out, and it ripped her in half, and it was a horrible story. All the firefighters and EMS people were just traumatized from that. Uh, but that shows you uh, Alaska is no joke. It's life and death everywhere, uh, out in the mountains, out in the wild, the beaches, uh, trying to cross like that. Very, very dangerous. So uh, I don't recommend trying to cross the inlet on foot in low tide. Not going to do it. It's bad enough for me just trying to uh, cross these little streams with the glacial mud and getting stuck in that mud. It's horrible. But a little trick you can do taught me in that Alaskan quicksand, instead of struggling and trying to pull your legs out side to side, that's just going to work you deeper, you kind of flop forward. And flopping forward will help pop your legs back up. And then you almost kind of swim out, try to stay on. Chook's trick of the day. Chook's, uh, oh, well, it's, it, they blasted a big cliff right there. This is a pretty area. This is a pretty area. Look at this. If you just look at it. This is Bird Creek. Let's see if anybody's fishing. No. Uh, it's low tide. That's why. Uh, they've started fishing there already. Uh, I guess kings come in there if they're fishing. That's mainly a silver salmon fishery. Um, but you just see, it's combat fishing. You see little people lined up there. And I was thinking about doing some combat fishing where you're elbow to elbow. Um, you know, it's not fun. Uh, well, it is fun, but it's not as fun as just going out in the middle of nowhere and having your own spot and fishing. But if you want to collect salmon, you got to do it. Um, I didn't have time to pack my rod, but I may use something that my dad has, and we may go king salmon fishing on the spit tonight. We'll see uh, a couple years, a bunch of kings out of there, fill my freezer, so I wouldn't mind getting a couple couple salmon. Might do some surf fishing, too, since I'm not going to be out killing myself on the trail like Chuck. We're just going to be at the camp, so we uh, did. Ha I do have the Glock. 10 millimeter and I did get the Streamlight uh, TRL uh, one HL or whatever uh, because it fits the GS Kydex holster. So I feel pretty good about that. I got extreme penetrators and double points in the Glock 20. So, uh, but the, the place we're going to, there's no brown bears. It's very rare or a brown bear. Oh, there's some statues of brown bears right there. Uh, very rare for a brown bear to show up. It's all black bear. And I keep saying it, but in some areas, there's one black bear per square mile. Not all the areas, but I, I believe that in some areas because you just see so many. They're there everywhere. There's just so many berries for them to eat. And those, those old logging roads that have been clear cut. And there's salmon and little animals they can eat and uh, just a lot of food, mainly berries. I think they, there's just uh, there's just enough uh, berries on those mountains to keep a huge black bear population uh, fed. Uh, and I didn't realize that Admiralty Island was the second biggest brown bear population in the, in the North America. The first, uh, or in the United States, it's the first, but it's the second North America. There's a place in British Columbia that's got the highest brown bear population. Um, 
So I'll be going there in November probably and hunting deer. The biggest brown bear population in the United States. So there you go. That shows you how crazy Chuke is. Look at all that. Uh, there's just a bunch of mud out here. The tide is out. So if the tide is out here, it may be low tide. I, I need to get a tide book because i got to figure out so there will be a tide if I'm going to fish in Homer tonight got to know the tides and the outgoing tide incoming and outgoing tide is always good because it brings the salmon there's still snow as avalanche shoots so it's still kind of cold still big piles of snow out here in the mountains so all right guys well just a quick stream um if we have enough signal i will try to do a live stream uh sunday from camp that would be cool just depends on what kind of signal when we get out there. And then Chuck uh, will do a live stream from the boat tomorrow morning. So. Um, all right, guys. It's Chuk signing out. Uh, I'll see you soon.